So today I've got a special Halloween tutorial and we're going to create this disgusting text effect. So this effect is very simple, it's mainly the material that does the work. And um, I'm just going to start by creating a mole text object and I'm going to write quick VFX. And I'm just going to align it middle, like that. And I'm going to choose a nice font, maybe a Soho Gothic, like that. Now, the next step is I'm going to create a connect object, put the mole text in there, and then click on the connect object and click make editable. And this is going to collapse it down to a polygon object. And I'm just going to delete all these tags, I don't need them. So I'm just going to call this text uh, shape. Now I'm going to create a cloner and a simple sphere. I'm going to make the sphere a child of the cloner and I'm going to set the cloner to object mode and drag and drop the text shape in here. And I'm just going to scale down the sphere, say four centimeters, maybe eight, like that. And I'm going to set the distribution to volume instead of vertex. And I'm just going to hide this text shape. And I'm going to increase the count. And I'm just going to keep increasing the count until the text is kind of uh, legible. I'm just going to reduce the sphere radius again to 5 and keep increasing the count. So. <clears throat> For the sake of this tutorial, I'm not going to go too high on the count. I don't want to slow down the machine too much. So I'm just going to start with something like this. Now the next stage is we want to create a meta balls object, this one here, and make the cloner a child of that meta ball object. And we get this massive blob thing. So just click on the meta ball and check exponential fall off and set the editor and render subdivisions to 12 to start with. So we've got a bit of uh, detail to work with. And the whole value, uh, the more you reduce this, the fatter it's going to get. So I'm going to go for 50% like this. Now, if you render this, um, it doesn't look like much. It's kind of a, it's quite a cool effect, but it's quite blocky. So what we want to do is we want to create a new uh, material. So I'm just going to create a new material and add that to the meta ball object like that. And this is where all the magic happens basically. It's all to do with the material. So I'm just going to double click this material and I'm going to choose a color. I'm going to choose something quite dark, sort of a dark purple like that. And I'm just going to reduce the specular slightly, something like that. Next I'm going to check reflection, this is very important, and I'm just going to give it a value of 25%. And I'm going to create a sky object and give it an HDRI map. So I'm just going to go to Content Browser, we've got some ready-made materials there, under uh, Prime Materials HDRI. I'm going to choose this number 22, put that on the sky object. I'm going to add a compositing tag to, to the sky object and uncheck scene by camera like that. So I'm just going to render this just to check what's going on. And we, we've got this cool kind of reflection effect now. But we're not done yet. Go back to the metaball material. And now the very, very important part is check displacement. It's located here. And we're going to choose a noise map. So go to noise, click on the noise tab to go into the noise map settings. And where it says noise, I'm going to choose Naki. This is the best uh, noise map I found for a flesh effect. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the animation speed to 0 0.08, like that. So if I right click this uh, preview image and click animate, we can see that moving. Now I'm going to right click and uncheck animate and in my uh, strength setting I'm just going to reduce the strength slightly down to about 70% 70, 70 maybe like that 
Now very important, check sub polygon displacement here and also check round geometry. These two are very important. So I'm now going to render and take a look at this. And now we've got this pretty cool effect. It looks very fleshy and kind of um, organic. So now to the final and very important step is check luminance here. Go to luminance and we're going to add the subsurface scattering. So click this arrow here. Effects, subsurface scattering is off the screen. Now before we play about with these settings, we need some light in the scene. So I'm just going to create three simple lights. A key light about here. I'm just going to copy that. A fill light over here. It's reduced intensity. And I'm just going to copy the light again. And put one behind uh, the object. So I'm going to put one about here. This is going to be the backlight. And I'm just going to increase the intensity to 200%. So we get this strong kind of lighting on the edges. I'm just going to render that just to check the lighting. Now we get this weird kind of uh, white effect. That's because we need to fine tune our subsurface scattering. So I'm just going to go back to my material. I'm going to reduce the brightness here down to 50% like that. Now I'm going to go into the subsurface scattering options and I'm going to set the strength to 50% in here as well. And the color, I'm going to choose a sort of reddish uh, something like that and I'm gonna set the path length to three centimeters like that and now I'm gonna render again so now we can see that this uh, looks very fleshy now it looks almost wet pretty disgusting and um, <clears throat> I'm just gonna increase the brightness of the backlight again just to kind of exaggerate this translucency effect we're not seeing it that clearly right now so uh, this is my backlight. I'm going to increase the intensity to 400%. And I'm just going to increase my key light intensity as well, just a bit higher. And hit render again. So that's looking uh, a bit too bright maybe. I'm just going to reduce my uh, key light back down to, I'm going to give it 90%. Now, another very important point is, Make sure the render is set to physical, not standard. Make sure you're using physical. And just use a, a low sampling quality to begin with. And just before you render your final scene, switch it to high, but low is good for now. So that's very important. And I'm just gonna zoom in very close here. And I'm just gonna move my backlight down a bit more. Put it kind of right behind the object here. And I'm gonna render again. So we can see that this is looking quite uh, wet and disgusting. Now, if you're not getting a good result, just go back to the luminance tab into subsurface scattering and play with the path length. So like a value between, try values between one and 10 centimeters and one of those should look um, kind of ideal. And finally, that's pretty much it. If you really want, you can add some uh, animation onto the cloner just add a random effector like that and I'm just going to turn off metaballs like that and I'm just going to give it some low values 5 centimeters now go to um, effector and where it says random mode choose turbulence and that will just give you some slight kind of turbulence and you can reduce the animation speed here 5 make it kind of something quite small like that now I've got to warn you, um, if you use this technique and turn on metaballs, you're going to get some popping effects, which might be uh, what you're looking for, but the metaballs is going to pop and uh, act pretty erratically. So if you want a really, really smooth animation, just uh, get rid of that random effector and let the animation on the displacement map do the work here. And that will give you a very kind of smooth effect. So uh, that's the end of this tutorial. I hope you uh, found that interesting and uh, thanks for watching.